Hello everyone, today I've got a new logo animation tutorial for you. It's simple but it still looks pro and it's perfect for logos with strange letters. And the reason behind it being simple is that you just have to animate one letter. For the rest of the letters you can use the same animation over and over and animate the logo as fast as possible. And if you're interested in motion graphics and animation in After Effects and you want to learn it from zero to hero, don't miss out on this course today, because just today you can get it at half price. Ok, without further ado, let's start. First, I type the logo using the font that you can find in the description below. I pick up the type tool and type the text. I enable the transparency so I can see better. I move the anchor point to the center of the layer. As you can see to make the text better, I used both uppercase and lowercase letters. I want to convert it to a shape so I right click on it and under create, I click on create shape from text. To make the text unique, I've changed the letters quite a bit and as you can see the text now looks like this. I delete the previous layer and I place this at the center of the comp. Ok, before I start animating, I have to separate the letters. To separate the letter P from the rest of the letters, I duplicate the layer. I open it and I delete every other letter except for the letter P. Let me solo the letter P so I can see it better. I place the anchor point at the center of it and now I have to slice the letter P into two pieces. For that, I duplicate the layer once more and open its path. Then by holding ALT and dragging, I select the points that I don't need and then delete them. Let me unsolo this layer so I can only see the first part. Then by the pen tool, I move this point up a little bit and rename it. Now let's make the second part of the letter P. I open its path and by holding ALT, I select the points that I don't need and delete them. And I fix the path. I unsolo the layer and place its anchor point at the center and rename it. Well, in the next step, I want to animate these two layers and start from this layer. For that, I have to create a stroke layer. I change the size of the stroke to 33. I open the stroke layer and I add the trim pass modifier to it. I set the end to 35. And at the beginning of the timeline, I create a keyframe for its offset. After 23 frames, I change the offset to one. Let's check it out. As you can see, this trunk does one cycle and then it goes back to where it was. After that, I duplicate this layer three times. I open the fourth shape and I delete the offset keyframes only for this layer and I create a keyframe for its end in the beginning. Then after 23 frames, I change its end so the entire stroke would be visible. I hit the U button so I can see the keyframes. To make the animation overlap, I set a 10 frames interval between each layer's animation. Let's check it out. Well, it's good. After that, I want to change the color of each layer. I've already prepared my color palette, so now I can easily change the colors of the layer. Let's check it out. It's good. I select the layer and hit the U button so I can see the keyframes. In the next step, in order to give all animation of the layer one single easing and control them with a slider, I paste the expression that you can find in the description below for each animated property of this layer. But first, I need a slider. For that, I go to the effects and presets panel and look up slider and add it to the layer. Then I paste the expression to these properties. 
Pay attention that in this part of the expression, the number should be 0 and 100. Then I select this part of the expression and by the pick web, I define the slider. And then I copy and paste this expression on other properties. Then at the beginning of the timeline, I create a keyframe for the slider. I hit U to see the keyframes. And on the third second, I create another keyframe and then easy is both keyframes. And I set the second keyframe to 100. Let's check it out. As you can see, there is a problem with the animation and that's because the expression can't recognize the start and end of the animation. To solve that, I head to the beginning of the animation and create a keyframe for all these properties. And I also create a keyframe for all of them at the end of the animation, so the end and start would be recognized by the expression. And let's check it out one more time. Looks great. In the next step, in order not to have problems changing the color of the next letters, and to do this very easily and quickly, I create a color control for each color. To do that, I select the layer, and by right-clicking on the effects control panel, under expression controls, I choose color control. And I name it 01, and duplicate it based on how many colors we have. I match the colors of the controllers with these colors. Then I open the colors of the layer and parent each color to its respective slider. After that, I add another slider for this layer and name it in trim path. And I set the value of the slider to the end value of the trim paths, which is 35. Then I open the layers and parent each end to the slider. Only the end property of the fourth layer doesn't need to be parented. I hit U so the keyframes appear. I made the last slider so I could later change the distance and length of each line better and faster. Let's check it out. Very good. In the next step, I have to match the stroke layer with the leather parts. Well, there is a problem here. We have to be able to control the path of all layers together. Okay, to do so, I should parent the path of each layer to its upper one. And now, as you can see, I can control the path of all layers together by changing the path of the upper layer. I put the stroke layer tangent to the letter P like this. I change the name of the stroke layer to P1 animation, and I place it below the P1 layer. Let's give it a look. In order for the animation of the lines to be visible only in the form of the P1 layer, I alpha map the animation layer to the P1 layer. Let's see how it looks. That looks pretty cool. Now let's animate the second part of the letter. For that, I don't need to do anything new. I just need to duplicate the animation layer and then I disable its track mat for now. Then I place it under the P2 layer and rename it. After that, I have to match the path of the lines with the second part of the P letter. I solo these two layers and let's check it out. 
looks good. And again, like the previous part, I alpha mat the animation layer to the P2 layer. Now let's see. Seems good. I also load the layer. And let's check out the two layers animation together. Looks very well. Now I want the first three colors of the second part to be different from the first one. Since I parented each color to a controller, now I can easily and quickly change the colors. Let's give it a shot. Very well. In the next step, I have to make sure the animation of both parts start at the same time and also finishes at the same time on the third second. I select the animation layers and hit U. I select the first part and drag this point down so the lines will then be visible at the beginning. From exactly where the lines show up, I go back by one frame and create a keyframe and I move it back to where the first keyframe of the slider is. And for the final keyframe from exactly where the lines fill up the text, I create a keyframe and place it on the last keyframe. Now, as you can see, in the second three, the lines animation is done and finished, not before. I do the same for the second part as well. Exactly one frame before the animation begins, I create a keyframe for the slider and move it on the first keyframe. It starts a bit late. And exactly where the second part of the letter finishes, I create a keyframe for the slider and place it on the last keyframe. And now, as you can see, the animation of both parts is synced. They start and end together. Looks amazing. You can continue in this way and animate the remaining letters using the same process. And note that the separation of each letter is solely based on your preferences and you can slice a letter to how many pieces you want. And if you're into logo animation, check out this playlist. Thanks for watching.